Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. Writing code is something that we learned or practiced on our day-to-day, -day, right? But managing a project end-to-end, -end, probably not that much. In this talk, I'll share my journey of my writing an entire R&D code base from Bitbucket Cloud to a self-hosted GitLab on my own, but with the great help of people along the way, of course, planning, implementation, and handoffs. I'll share best practices for managing a technical project with a lot of key takeaways you could adopt so your project will be handled smoothly and successfully. So first of all, hi, my name is Hila Fish. I'm a senior DevOps engineer. I work for Wix. I have 15 years of experience in the tech industry. I'm a DevOps culture fan. I'm co-organizer on conferences, DevOps Days Tel Aviv in Israel and StatCraft Israeli Monitoring Convention. I'm a mentor in courses and communities, and I'm lead singer in a cover band, which is a lot of fun. Okay, so this project took one month and a half to complete. So I have a lot to talk about. So I might uh, talk fast at times. Uh, and is it a lot, is it a little? You tell me after uh, seeing this presentation. Okay, so the project structure uh, started with a planning. What to think about, things to consider, foresee we'll bottlenecks and tackle them up front, deadlines, etc. Then uh, onwards to the implementation, including integration, security blockers, and training for the R&D department because uh, this tool was uh, rather new to them and they needed to be familiarized uh, themselves with it. And documentation and handoffs because uh, it was done on one of my previous uh, companies and I knew that I'm going to leave after finishing this project. So I wanted to leave, a, a, you know, a documentation and everything needed for them to pick up uh, where I left off. And hovering above everything was project ongoing uh, statuses. So since I worked on it al alone, I wanted to make sure that they are aware of what I'm, what I'm doing and that they can track the, the progress of the project. Pre-planning. So when I got the task, I first started uh, asking some questions to understand the scope of the project. So what is my deadline? If I know the deadline, I know how to organize my time accordingly. Why are we doing this migration? If it's on-premise to on-cloud migration or SaaS to self-hosted migration or whatever, uh, we have considerations for each one. And I want to make sure that the project process and outcome is according to the management needs and requirements. And do I have any limitations? Do we want or need to do things in a certain way? For example, GitLab has two offerings, Omnibus, which was the VM installation and the Helm release for Kubernetes deployment. So if I know that we need to go with one other than the other, I need to prepare for it and uh, consider it uh, during the plan. So speaking about a plan, a goal without a plan is just a wish. We want to make sure that projects uh, get executed, so we need to create a high-level plan. This was the plan, and you know, a plan is great for me, the executor of it, but any management wants milestones and due dates. This is how they can measure progress and convey the status in a clear uh, manner, right? So that's why I've taken uh, my plan and converted it to be actionable and measurable with setting up milestones and due dates. First milestone is Terraform code and actually everything that was related to the platform side of things, creation of the GCP projects for dev and uh, production. Dev was created for uh, testing out uh, deployments of uh, GitLab to see that nothing breaks and to play with the feature that it uh, uh, presents. And uh, so everything related to the platform is in this uh, phase. Next one is network troubleshooting. So networking uh, was ha handled by a different team. So I automatically added a dedicated slot for troubleshooting since it involved not only me, right? Uh, prepare for the unexpected. It doesn't mean that networking uh, troubleshooting was restricted only to this phase. I had to troubleshoot issues throughout the project, but I tried to map every source and destination I could and have it all checked on this phase. Second uh, or next uh, milestone is GitLab up and running, including DNS name, certificate, and summary integration. Just make sure that GitLab is ready to use. Next up is the first migration uh, uh, of the repository. Uh, we I used the GitLab migration feature. I dealt with a lot of issues back then, open tickets for support. So this was phase was about uh, making sure that a repo uh, is actually working and accessible on GitLab. Next up, peripheral infra. So I made sure backups and restores are uh, tested and documented properly. A full system backup and restore repo-wise and branch-wise, and also took care of monitoring system-wise and application-wise, the GitLab metrics. And in this phase, I tried to finish all dangling uh, network efforts as well. 
Next up, second repo migration that involved a CI pipeline because uh, it is, in this point of time, we used GitLab only for uh, source control management and not as a CI. So in this phase, I uh, needed to do the actual Jenkins integration, configuration on Jenkins and GitLab side, and actually just make sure that the pipeline works and test it fully against the GitLab uh, repository. Next up is the training and gradual uh, login and actual uh, you know, migration uh, throughout the project. So training for my team that needs to maintain it because I'm leaving the company and I want to make sure that they can maintain it, but also for R&D to use the, the platform. So give them you know, an uh, intro on GitLab uh, main features and glossary and stuff like that. Gradual login. So we used some integration that required uh, the user's login for the user creation. So this was a good way to let them test the waters on dev and then uh, log in confidently uh, on pod instance. And of course, in parallel, the migration continued. I divided the migration uh, times based on repositories ownership. So it was coordinated with each team, uh, which repositories will be uh, migrated. And the last phase was that the migration is fully done. Uh, there was a repo uh, of the backend uh, uh, teams that uh, was big and important, so I uh, left it to the weekend. Weekend in Israel is uh, Friday, Saturday. So, uh, you know, uh, it was a happy Sunday after that. And also finish uh, documentation and handoffs for the DevOps and R&D teams. Everything that I just mentioned was in a planning doc that I created, and I added some more uh, extra uh, sections to cover everything and have everything centralized in one place. So first step, a mapping of needed steps on my side on and external teams to do out of scope high level tasks like a migrate eventually for GitLab CI, uh, read more things to dwell on and deepen our knowledge in because I read a lot of stuff and I wanted to make sure that uh, some things get the, the proper highlight uh, needed and things to, to think about. So consideration about uh, uh, annual audience uh, and stuff like that. Some more stuff to the planning, because why not? I utilize the planning doc for ongoing and somewhat temporary artifacts, like things that I need to map and issues I encountered during the project. So the, uh, the issues that I found, uh, both GitLab side or internal side, they were listed on separate uh, Jira tickets, but I wanted to have a central list because uh, we want to see if there are stuff that could potentially uh, endanger the project's uh, timelines. Also other appendices like access mapping, uh, inbound, outbound rules uh, that occurred on a uh, Bitbucket cloud that we need to set up on GitLab, elder groups, the entities that need access to the GitLab, and also main repositories and CI pipeline to track progress of what migrated and what not. Okay, so, you know, it's a migration, but it's a project. And I think that the most important uh, aspect in project is communication. The most important thing in communication is hearing what isn't said. So since I worked on this project alone, it was crucial to update my managers on the status so they can report back to their managers and show uh, I'm progressing according to the needed timelines. Weekly meetings uh, uh, were held to update my managers on the progress and also ad hoc meetings uh, with updates on blockers. So either issues that I needed their attention and escalate uh, help or FYI, like, hey, this is a, a issue X, I'm handling it this way, if you're okay with it, so cool, it's just an FYI. Jira tickets were opened for everything, for me, for other teams, because I want them to uh, keep progressing without the involvement on my side, if not uh, needed. And remember, information is power. Information, when delivered properly, without overbearing the recipient with details, can help ease the decision-making process and deliver a feeling of stability and allow your ongoing independence of running the project. So it's very important to communicate. And uh, I also had a meeting with the R&D team leaders to prepare them for the, uh, for the migration and what's going to happen, plus involve them in the folder structure of GitLab um, because I wanted their inputs as the code owners. And you know, if you involve the stakeholders, then they will be on board and help you as needed. Implementation side of things, so we use the Kubernetes GitLab deployment, and I use the GitLab Helm chart for, uh, for that. We use Terraform to deploy anything related to the uh, infrastructure, so I incorporated the GitLab Helm chart in Terraform. And you know, GitLab was entirely new to me, so I really relied on the documentation uh, to uh, take decisions for the implementation itself. For example, I used DB version X and not Y to prevent later maintenance because the version I used uh, was 
good for the next version and the next major version and backward compatibility as opposed to the version they put as a default which wasn't really uh, suitable i haven't implemented the uh, high availability feature because it wasn't a uh, general uh, available yet and i didn't want to introduce instability to the environment and monitoring was not baked for the kubernetes offering so i basically did it myself i went through the metrics documentation added dashboards uh, according to what i thought was important and alerts based on those metrics and fun fact gitlab changed the official documentation based on an issue that we raised so uh i, I don't have time to build it right now but if you're uh, intrigued then talk to me afterwards okay so training gitlab was new uh, a, a new tool for the r d environment right and uh, r d department so i didn't uh, want them to feel like i'm bringing it up on them and expect them to feel comfortable using it from day one, right? So that's why I did a training session for them to cover uh, GitLab basic usage, main features, and just uh, overall get them be familiarized with GitLab before uh, starting using it. Next, I created uh, a GitLab onboarding uh, document for them uh, of, with explanations how to change the local repo uh, copy to work with the remote uh, repo URL of GitLab. Yeah, you can find it online, but I wanted to uh, create a sense of support for them. So that's why I did it. And I created a dedicated Slack channel for the R&D, ask questions, raise bugs, get support for all GitLab related issues. Because again, I wanted to make sure that they know who to approach and that they have support for anything related to GitLab. Um, next thing is the documentation and handoff. So as I said, I left the company shortly after uh, migrating the, the code base. So I wanted to make sure that the DevOps team have what, whatever they need in order to maintain the project and the, the platform while I'm gone, right? So um, that's why the document really covered everything from how to deploy a new version of GitLab, how to manage and replace certificates, how and what information to provide to GitLab support when you're opening a ticket for them because it's an art of its own. So everything that I thought of was in this uh, document. Okay, so I covered a lot of things, right? Uh, implementation side of things, project. So what are the key takeaways that we have in order to really uh, take a, a technical project and run with it. So planning is a must, especially for long-term projects, you have to plan ahead. Understanding the company's uh, needs, why this project is important and use the, this information to try and foresee any bottlenecks is very, very important. So uh, gather information, derive uh, uh, deadlines from this uh, kind of information. And if you really uh, structure the project and especially the project plan, it will help you achieve things in a timely manner and literally progress according to plan. Updates and collaboration matters. So always uh, strive to involve the stakeholders and bring them up to speed uh, because it's very important. You can recruit them to your side and get their help uh, as much as uh, possible. Brainstorming and collaboration matters, point two. So uh, it's always to show best to showcase the technical implementation uh, you're planning to your team members and manager, uh, both to make them familiarize themselves with the project because they need to maintain it, but also to see if they have remarks on things uh, and you know things that you didn't think about because you want to ensure best implementation that is suitable for your use case. So brainstorming and collaboration is very important. Trade-offs are a given. So, uh, you know, deadlines, mandatories, uh, you know, things that need to, to be done, everything and a lot of things will happen uh, at once and you need to make sure that you uh, stick to what's important and focus on what matters right now. Documentation is key, both the documentation you read while implementing the technical aspects of things, but also, also the things, uh, the documentation that you leave behind. So read the documentation to defend your decisions later on if needed and leave documentation for others to uh, able to, uh, you know, take care of the platform while you're gone. And uh, lastly, uh, you know, change is hard. When people are used to working in a certain way, you need to take that into consideration when you plan your project, especially if it's the migration project. So make sure you leave time for training and familiarization with the tool. So thanks a lot for uh, listening and being with me. Uh, I know I spoke uh, quite uh, fast uh, at times, so I hope it was okay. If you have any questions about the project or the implementation, feel free to reach out and I'll be uh, more than happy to help. Thanks a lot.